Hello, dear. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's like a, a cameraman. Oh no, she's oh you come on now, those two <laughs> those two fine specimens of men up in here. Catch yourself watch, you never even yeah. seen the cameraman. <laughs> Everyone, this is Ed. <laughs> and Ed, essentially, I'm just gonna say Ed and his father, they run, own, operate, whatever way we want to call it, Apsley Farms, which basically cutting it right down is an energy farm. Yep. So I'm gonna to have to ask Ed <laughs> to explain a little bit more about what they do. Because everybody at this stage knows you run a 99 Forager and a 920 New Holland, because we've been putting wee videos up of us being out and about, so in your own words, what is Apsley Farms at? Uh, well, we started as a small half a megawatt electricity producing uh, biogas plant. And what that really is, is a, a large cow, which is made up of a load of concrete tanks. Yeah. And um, we put crops in and they digest away and they produce uh, biogas, which is made up of uh, methane and CO2. And uh, with that, we then put it into an engine and uh, we make electricity and then the crops that come out we then have a byproduct called digestate and then that's like the fertilizer that goes back on the fields so it's a completely virtuous cycle the next thing we did was uh, we got there was a new government subsidy that came out and uh, called uh, the renewable heat incentive and what that's about is uh, trying to cut the co2 emissions for um, making heat yeah. uh, in uh, houses. We decided to go down that route uh, as it was looking profitable. And to do that, we then needed to increase the amount of uh, crops that go into the plant. That's when it got interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so by doing that, we now put maize, rye and sugar beet, our three arable crops that we put in. We don't put any waste in. Um, so it's purely just the crops and uh, that has lots of benefits for us. And then what we do is uh, we clean the gas that's made up of the CO2 and the CH4, strip the two elements apart, and then we put the methane into the national grid, which is the CH4 bit. Um, and then the CO2 element, we then liquefy it and, uh, and then we sell it into the food and drink industry. And that's the bit that makes the bubbles in your beer and your soft drinks. Wow, I knew it. <laughs> so it's not just a one trick wonder digester here. No. So no. you're running, what's this? An 80? Uh, 8330. An 8330 fast track. You've bought yourself a brand new one. Yep. This is a demo that JCB's given you until you get your new one. Yep. The rest of your machinery pretty much is deer. Yeah, most of it's deer. We love technology and what we do for farming. Uh, we've been running GPS since about 2002 on the, on the combines um, and, the, uh, and the tractors that we had back then. And uh, we love RTK and think that it really uh, speeds up the job on the, on the big fields that we're doing. Now that we've gone a lot more into doing all of this foraging of all these crops, um, we wanted, uh, we've started finding that um, actually comfort uh, and speed, because most of what we do, going back to the ag bag, is on the side of the field. Yes. going across the tram lines etc and what we're trying to do is achieve having less tractors and trailers um, by achieving more tons in the trailer and having a more comfortable ride and uh, on the trailer we put 26 inch wheels on so we've got the bigger ground uh, circumference on the wheel uh, making it a better better ride for the trailer too 
and I see there obviously you went this a local local brand as well K2 Rodeo yeah uh, the 20 tonners uh, compaction eject and trailers I think I've got that all right <laughs> is this your first year running those no we ran them last year run them last um, year they, they're really great they're a good trailer we work wherever we can we try and buy British if it financially makes sense and uh, and they're nice and close up in Oxford so if we have any problems we can run them up there and they can sort them out and to be fair we haven't really had many problems at all and we bought them with the weighers as well so when we're putting them in the sausages if we need to we can weigh them but also we can calibrate the foragers as well oh I right. all along with that because you're running the harvest lab 3000 yeah that harvester is fully loaded I've seen that last night whenever Paul from the Hunt Forest Group was with us he was he was showing us that you have all the information that you can look in in your phone and see your yield maps see everything yeah. And you even have the John Deere system because you like it so much. Yeah. You even have it integrated into your FR. Yeah, we somehow. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we put the uh, the John Deere system on the New Holland as well, and that's recording all the info. And then uh, both the New Holland and the John Deere, as they leave the field, all goes straight up to the website, and we can give our printout uh, straight to the farmer of what they did on that field, and uh, and then that will start the invoicing process as well. So, uh, oh yes, well that's that's important as well. So your crops, right? With ryegrass, we have maize and we have sugar beet. Do yeah, you... but it's a, it's a cereal rye crop rather right, than so a ah. grass. Uh, but we don't put a huge amount of sugar beet in, but we we put a bit in. Um, it's quite a uh, profitable crop to grow at home for the AD plant, but um, it's got a lot of water content in it and uh, can't make gas out of water. But, uh, and it also costs quite a bit of money then to spread it back out on the fields. Eight four hundred. <laughs> Just saying. <Yeah. laughs> it's a good bit of kit, isn't it? Can you tell I like my deer, my deers? Here, yeah. this is comfy. Yeah, this is really comfy. I have to say, I. Even I just drove that a minute ago and I couldn't go over that at this speed that we're doing now. But the other thing is, as soon as you put that passenger in a normal tractor, they're bouncing all over the place. And the thing with you sat there is you're nice and comfortable and we can crack on at a good speed, not having to, um, to worry too much about it. Basically, the bottom line here, you're enjoying the fast track. You don't normally drive, now this is important yeah. to say that I suppose we wanted to get a look at the fast track, we wanted to, to get a chat with you in the natural environment, but you are normally managing this operation. Yeah, normally. So this I, is a treat for you. Normally, yeah, it is. I quite enjoy driving. But uh, no, with the two foragers and the six trailers and the ag bagging and then all the different farms we're going to daily or every couple of days. But like bringing it back into basics, now that you're in the middle of your harvest, not only is that, that an issue that needs to on top of, there's still a couple of hundred plus ton uh, of feed needed every day to be carted from your ag bags, wherever they are in the country, back, because that's the amount of feed, because we, we popped off yesterday and we seen uh, the labour and uh, filling up one of your scanning trucks and I was just like impressed. I had to get a go on it myself <laughs> right enough. But, um, yeah, so like, there's a lot going on. Yeah, so we got we got uh, the transport of getting the crops back from every farm within the sort of 30 mile radius that uh, that we contract um, all the growers to grow for us, and then uh, and then we got and then we got the transportation of that in, and then we've got uh, we got the biogas plant running as well with a team that are looking after that, and then we got the, and then we got the harvest as well. So uh, yeah, we've got to move the lo uh, the lever when it's finished at each of the jobs, and we've got to fit that in around the harvest. That's a four week window. So we've got two of those diggers, one on maize, one on rye, and every one to two weeks they move to the next job and um, hopefully leave it a nice clean, clean site. So we've got um, six trucks. Um, <laughs> Not too shabby. <laughs> so we've got three walking floors and we've got three tankers. So uh, when we go out digestate spreading, we've got the snorkels on, on the back of a 30 cube tanker. And, uh, and those mean that we can get to the side of the road and um, he can snorkel straight out of the back of the tanker. And a nice fleet of tag axle scanners. Yes. Oh yes. Second hand. With all the trees and branches we do a lot of countryside miles. 
Um, so actually, it does make sense to um, uh, it makes sense to have a second-hand one. And the guys don't, you know, if they were a bit too precious about it, probably wouldn't be. We probably wouldn't go anywhere with them. Well, that's true. But um, yeah, yeah. it's been quite a bit of a challenge working out what uh, trailers to put on the back of them because um, we were using tippers before. Coming back to the jester and just putting it in the plain English for myself, does a ton in equal a ton out? Not quite. Um, because of the way that bugs are eating at the crop, you actually lose um, an element of it in gas. Yes, um, of, under, yes, of course. So there's there's an element that's lost, but it, it, uh, well, the figure is probably something like 80 odd percent is, nice. is coming back out. Where is Apsley Farms based? So Apsley Farms is based in Andover, Hampshire. Uh, yeah. We're just off the 303. My great great grandfather bought it in 1938, and he was a stockbroker. And um, and so we've had three gen. We're on the third generation on the farm. Stockbroker. So he was was he down in the big town yeah. shouting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Boxing people looking yeah. to get a share sold. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So he he did well out of that, and um, and so we were lucky enough that he bought the place that we've got. We've been farming it for quite a while now, but um, with with farming having its challenges. Uh, in 2012, we thought that um, it, we needed something to do something different and add a bit of value to the crops that were growing. We mortgaged up the farm and um, put every every bit to the bank so we could get the money to start building it. And uh, and it's certainly been a challenge. <laughs> it's uh, quite a few sort of sleepless nights, and uh, instead of hearing a noise or anything, you get a text message from it from Daisy, as we call her. And, oh, uh, she called Daisy. Yeah, Daisy the cow. Daisy the cow. Concrete cow. Yeah. Daisy the and cow. so she sends you a text message telling you what what her issue is, uh, whether it be I don't know a circuit breaker that's gone or a pump that's failed or I don't know not enough tons fed I in would, an hour. I would say there would be nothing like getting a text message from Daisy in the middle <laughs> of the night to get you out of bed. Because <laughs> I, I not, not that I need to know, but I would say uh, when 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 it's all calculated back down to money per hour, <laughs> she would you wouldn't want her lying down too long, as we no, would say. It gets, you, it gets you out of bed, and you know you're going to come back and needing a shower. <laughs> <laughs> Dog the slug is flat out here. <laughs> flat out, doing, doing 0.01 <laughs> mile an hour. <laughs> he barely moves very fast each day. Um, I don't think anyone else goes as slow as he does. He loves it, but and he sure does. He loves and, it. Um, and they've been brilliant to us. They, they provide an A-class service. It's the first of its type in the UK. It's only the eighth of this type of machine to be built. Yeah. And Doug's trying to just master it himself here. He was saying, and uh, so far so good. I think he's, I think he's, um, I think he's liking it. And did you tell me yesterday when we were looking at the lorry and the the, the, the digger lifting it, uh, roughly in one of your slugs there's a thousand tons. Yeah, in, 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 in each... a big slug or a, a, I call it a slug, and a big whatever you call it, it's like a slug. Slug, yeah. It moves at the speed of one too. But in a bag you could have about a thousand ton or so on a bag. Yeah. So it's about a thousand twelve hundred ton depending on the dry matter, that is the amount of tons that can be fed in is really how good the driver is. Because they've got to get forward, get reverse, tip, and get out of the way before the next one can come in. So having a good trailer gang, um, who's pretty good at reversing, is uh, pretty key to um, getting the, the, the output. Because certainly when you've got the two foragers and they're right next to the uh, ag bag machine, need it. Yeah, he's got, he can have a queue of trailers sometimes. But um, he's pretty good at getting it done, and he's amazingly fast at the old uh, bag change. He is actually. We've seen that yesterday. To be fair to him, though, it to is be fast. fair to him, he's good. He's very good. They've got the backup. They've got the support. They've got all the uh, spare parts that they need for the kit, and um, and they're always there when we need them. So it's flawless. And he's a good lad. And he's a great lad. Yeah. <laughs> That's the. Thing. Well. 
but he missed motocross yesterday for you, you know. Did he now? He did now. He was telling me that yesterday now. He says there was a big motocross event on and he was just like... I think he's off this weekend for that, isn't he, as well? What about this baby? Little 6250R. Little? <laughs> Compared to your 8400. <laughs> I'll tell the jokes. <laughs> Little, I think that's one of the best tractors it's, ever made. Yeah, it's a, it's a great tractor. It's the fast track's a little bit. It's a little bit of a misfit in your fleet, it, though. It, you're totally right. It is a misfit, and I'm trialing it out. I want to see what all the gang think of it. We got quite a few demos last year. It, um, everyone really liked it. Uh, with the amount of sort of hauling we're doing. To be honest, when I was just driving up this road a minute ago and I was following, I was following another tractor and I thought, you know what, if you're going up country roads, you don't need anything more than 50k. All the tractors can do the same job. The advantage of this thing is if you're on the dual carriageway uh, and you want to do 70, then this has got that speed to get you to those places quicker. But its biggest advantage is going across those fields and, and having that smooth ride um, and getting the job done quickly, really. So but, where does your heart lie? Uh, I, I think that the John Deere kit is a very refined product. They spend a lot of time getting it there. And, and, I, th and I love the technology side of everything they do. Everything from the app to the website. You know, one of the things we've done recently on, uh, on it is we've plotted all the fields that we're, that we're going to. And so for Y, we've got 140 odd fields that we're doing this year. So we've plotted every single one on there. So we put the AB lines on, and then we've also gone and mapped all the telegraph lines, or telegraph wires running up and down all the fields, so that as the foragers are going along, it's coming up on the screen, going, hang on, you know, it just gives that extra bit of warning, because foraging uh, is quite a quick job. Uh, we've got these very tall trailers, which I think are brilliant for, um, the taller the trailer I feel, the more we get on it, rather than the length, because it sort of self-compacts as we're going across the field. And um, once you've got the height of these, a bit of a gap, the forager spout is very, very close, and sometimes there's a lot to think about, and um, we try and reduce the uh, mistakes as much as we can. I think it's a great system. That's why you have a John Deere system in the New Holland then, because you're one of these guys that's actually using it. Yep. <laughs> but what about the 920? So the 920 is a interesting machine because actually I think it's got a lot of grunt in it. It's got a couple of really nice features that I like in it. One of them being, and I don't know the technical name for it, but you set it at 90% of its um, uh, engine load or 95% and it will constantly load that machine up, uh, which we haven't got in the John Deere. And I've certainly seen in a few places where when that button's pressed, it's constantly changing its speed all the time to make sure that we're absolutely loading that machine up. And that's where you're gaining that extra, you know, 100 meters of, um, of speed on every single run that we're going across the field and getting the job done quicker. Do you ever think, and please don't hit me, <laughs> Do you ever think about the biogas thing, you know, the food, uh, you're taking away food, or, you know that old, yeah. that old chestnut as they but, talk about, or? Um, personally, no, not really. I think there's so much land out there that's not even being used in this countryside for food. I think there's an abundance of food out there. Um, you know, the more and more we're going to these heavier crops per acre uh, all over the world, I think the big thing at the moment is all about being green. Um, although it's going to cost people money because you know the investment we've done at home it, is expensive, and that does mean that it it costs quite a bit of money to um, to actually produce the gas out of it. I think this is a great way because because our plant runs 24/7. It's a great base load for electricity and gas in um, in the in the sort of national grid. Uh, whereas um, it's solar and wind is very optimal, you know, based on clouds and whether there's enough wind, etc. So I think this is a great alternative for Earth to farming, where you've got another variety of crops that can be grown, um, 
a different form of subsidy regime that could replace maybe single farm payment if and when it goes. And, um, and also uh, we're being very green, you know, all of this is being taken off, being put into a process where, um, where we're actually capturing the CO2 and selling it onto a different yeah. system. And, and there are, although we sell it into the food and drink industry, there's plenty of other um, sources that it, it can actually go into uh, concrete and help the curing process yeah. and speed of concrete. So there's loads of ways of capturing that carbon and actually sticking it somewhere. Um, so th I, think, I think in terms of food versus fuel, uh, I, th I personally think that there's loads of places that if we were that desperate to um, have more food, I think there's loads of land out there that certainly in, in the UK, yeah. we're able to, um, to crop and grow if we need to. And we, and we can be more efficient, you know, when we look at the losses on it all, it's um, with everything from harvesting all the way through to getting it to the shop floor, I think there's a lot that could be done there to improve that as well. I have to say this, this route we're doing today is a good route for uh, giving the fast track a good sort of uh, road test because we're going to do a bit of road, a little bit of uh, in, uh, in the field and then we've got a nice bumpy track to go up and absolutely shows what this thing's capable of. You're liking this? Yeah, love it. I love it. This is a really comfortable day out. Hope you enjoyed learning about Daisy, the digester there, and uh, the new 8330 fast track water machine. Not just as good, but not far away. Remember folks, if you like this video, hit the subscribe button, leave your comments below. We'll try and get back to you as soon as possible. And remember to check out the rest of our channel for wonderful content just like this.